All righty, we've hit the 8 o'clock hour. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, this is Jonathan Coppice from the University of Illinois. I'm joined this morning by Gary Schnicky. Hello. Nick Paulson. Good morning. Um, thank you for taking time out of your day to, uh, to uh, sit here and listen with us as we go through the 2014 Farm Program, 2014 Farm Bill uh, Farm Program decisions. Uh, we're going to start with uh, a brief couple of uh, PowerPoint slides and then we're going to dive right into the websites that have just been uh, made publicly available yesterday. Um, as most of you know, the Department of Agriculture announced yesterday the, uh, the, they published the regulations which basically run and operate the new programs in the Farm Bill. And along with that, these web-based uh, online decision tools, decision uh, aids to help with the uh, program choices from this Farm Bill. So with that, we're going to get started. Um, as mentioned uh, previously, in case you just joined us, you can ask questions as we go. Type them in there on your screen. Uh, we see them here, and we will try to answer them as we go, and then we will cer certainly do a uh, question and answer session uh, once we get through the presentation. And then, of course, all of this is recorded and will be archived on the Farm Doc, Farm Bill Toolbox website uh, in case we need to go back or you need to go back and, and pick up something that, that you might have missed. So with that introduction, uh, I'm going to quickly go to um, go through a couple slides, kind of intro where we're at, and then we will uh, demonstrate the uh, websites and the web tool. So as we said, we're on the 2014 Farm Bill and the Farm Program Decision Tool, uh, this uh, weekly webinars. <clears throat> we want to first start off by acknowledging uh, the coalition that, that the University of Illinois led and put together to help develop all of the material and and the web tools. Uh, we want to give a special acknowledgement to Watson Associates who did uh, great work and you're about to see that here in a few minutes but you can see the universities that have been involved and will continue to be involved in this effort uh, to not only develop the tool but also get it, uh, information out uh, to do education and outreach across the country to help producers uh, everywhere in the country understand these programs and do the sign up. So we want to take a moment to thank those um, those of us that are in the, in the group here working together, we appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this. So what are we talking about? We are talking about the farm programs, Title I uh, farm programs, and the decisions, decisions required by the, the new Farm Bill. As we mentioned, we're going to talk about the Farm Bill toolbox that's on FarmDoc. We're going to walk through the steps um, for these farm program decisions, and we're going to demonstrate the, <clears throat> excuse me, the APAS, the Agricultural Policy Analysis System Decision Tool, um, and, and demonstrate how that works and how it will work for you. The way we kind of look at this is we've got three sets of decisions. Uh, every producer and landowner in some form or fashion has three sets of decisions in front of them. And as we went through uh, putting together the, the materials, we kind of broke it down into seven steps. We think there are about seven steps you, can, you need to walk through to get to those, those three decisions, and we're going to show those here briefly. As a reminder, uh, many of you know this, but just to make sure we've, we've covered all bases here, um, these are one-time irrevocable decisions. That means that you get one opportunity to do so during the sign-up period. We don't have a deadline yet, so we don't know when that sign-up period is exactly going to end, but you only get one shot at making the decision, and it is irrevocable. So every decision we're talking about cannot be changed during the life of this Farm Bill, which is 2014 to 2018 unless, of course, it gets extended, which is always a, a possibility. And it follows it through to the farm. So if, yes. so if, if, if you make a decision on a farm and someone else buys it or rents it, <clears throat> that decision that is made on that farm will, will continue to go through with that farm. That's absolutely correct. It's by FSA farm. So many of you operate more than one FSA farm. So that FSA letter with the, with the farm number on it, each one of those farm numbers, you will be making these decisions for that farm. And as Gary pointed out, um, it sticks with the farm no matter what changes. If, it's, if the farm is sold or rented to somebody else, the decisions you make uh, during this sign-up, this decision process will stay with it. So the three decisions. Uh, the first one is whether or not you want to update the payment yields that are on that farm. Uh, the second decision is whether or not you want to retain or reallocate the base acres on that farm. Again, FSA by farm by FSA farm. These first two are the landowner decision. The landowner, the, the individual owning that property, owns the, 
these are the records that run with the farm, so they stay with the farm, and any decision to update payment yields or retain or reallocate base acres is for the landowner. landowner. Then the third decision uh, is the really complex decision of the three. This is the program election. Do you want price loss coverage? That's PLC. You can, uh, and we're going to try to explain all the acronyms as well, so pardon the, the use of acronyms, but it's, it's the unfortunate nature of, of the bill. Um, price loss coverage or the SCO program, you can add that on. Uh, that's the supplemental coverage option. That is a crop insurance program. We'll discuss that as well. It's only available if you, if you elect price loss coverage on the crop. And then there's agriculture risk coverage, the county option, or ARCCO, or ARCCO, and agriculture risk coverage, individual farm coverage option. Uh, the last two are revenue-based programs, and we will uh, go through plenty of details on that. So at this point, bear with me, we're going to jump over to the Farm Bill Toolbox and walk through what has been set up here. So what you should see on your screen now is the Farm Doc Farm Bill Toolbox. Uh, like I said, it's kind of our, our one-stop uh, resource for all parts of this Farm Bill decision. And, and the web address you see listed at the top there, farmbilltoolbox.farmdoc.illinois.edu. You go there and you'll see our, 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 uh, our th this screen. And we want to, again, uh, thank our partners in developing this and the Illinois Corn Growers as well for, for making this available. There's two things at the top. And one is the dairy program, but we're going to go through the, uh, the uh, ARC PLC decision right now. So click away, Jonathan, and we'll go through the seven steps. Before I do that, I'm going to just plug the webinar. So as you see right here, uh, every Friday, you can register for webinars. Uh, this will go all the way out through uh, at least the end of October. And then we are going to archive them here as well. Um, you can also visit the Farm Doc site and, the, and uh, other webinars and information that is archived there. So, uh, Gary, Nick, we're going to start with the decision steps. So we're going to su suggest that you do seven steps again. And you see here on their screen the three steps that the, the three decisions that you see, see listed. Retain or update yields, retain or reallocate base acres, and choose your farm program. And as you click through this, we're going to give you the information that you need to make those decisions. The collect information, you actually should have received a letter from FSA. It probably came in August, was delayed, uh, dated July 28th. This letter contains all of your current base acres, program yields, and your plantings from 2008 through 2012. And that's going to be very important as we go through these tools that that, that information is available. Here's what that letter looks like, and again, we're going to, if you're looking at the right-hand side of your screen, we're going to be pulling information from that right-hand side of the screen as we make these decisions. And, and most of this information right here will, will aid in particular the updating decision, um, updating yield decision, reallocating base acre decision, your acres and your planted acres are here. So this is an important letter if you don't throw those away. I don't know if you FSA will make another copy for you probably, but this this is the one letter that we we need we need from. So Yeah. This this letter is going to be really important in these decisions, particularly the payment yield, the updating payment yield decision and that reallocated base acre decision. Uh one thing I just want to note uh because this question has come up a lot uh, this letter mentions 60-day deadline. I want to be really clear that is not a deadline to make any decision. What that deadline was intended to do was to get you into the FSA office if any of the information on this page was incorrect for that FSA farm. You got your FSA farm number, you've got the base acres that they have on record, and the counter cyclical payment or program yield that they have on record, as well as the planted acres that you, the FSA, has on record as being reported. Uh, for that FSA farm. If any of those numbers are incorrect, uh, our advice would be to get into FSA and work with them to make sure you get the correct numbers because this is what they will be working off of uh, for the payment yields and base acre uh, reallocation decision. 
The other piece of information that you're going to need or pieces of information are your actual yields from this farm from 2008 through 2012. When you come to the, uh, this, the, the, those yields, you will be providing to those to FSA on a form. You'll provide them 2008 through 2012 and you'll certify that those are the correct yields. You won't be required to provide documentation for, the, for those yields at this point in time. But if you get audited, you should have obviously records, settlement sheets, crop insurance records to back up those uh, those yields. Um, that does, as we're going through this, that is one. If you if a farmer's picked up a piece of land in 2010, 2011, 2012, getting those prior yields may be hard. Um, but um, those those yields will be used in the updating yield decision. Right. Just to clarify, too, crop insurance records will count that that yield history. Yeah, that's uh, correct, and, and you might the have best source of that yield history if you have it. And you'll probably need to divide that down into FSA farms, to because if you're doing enterprise units, that might include more than one farm. With that, we're going to move on to step two, and this is the uh, keep your current payment yields or update those payment yields. Um, and Gary, you want to walk through this a little bit? So what we're going to do here. Keep our update yields. Um, this is on that letter. You have your current uh, yields on that farm for corn and soybeans, wheat, etc. You'll have those yields, and now your decision is to keep that yield or update the yield for each one of, or one of the crops on your farm. You can make different decisions for each one of the crops on your farm, and let's. And, and we've developed, uh, Watson Associates, let's go there right now, we've developed a little uh, utility to make uh, that yield updating decision easier. So click on the... Uh, See, I'm not going to, if you click on this, it'll take you through to the APAS tool. We've already got it open, so I'll just jump over here. And what we're going to do is go into the payment yield updating tool, and Jonathan's going to, Jonathan's running this, so we're... we're <laughs> Let's go to some place closer to the middle. Yeah. There, Illinois. We're I had an I state. Wrong one. Wrong one. So, what you'll do f for this tool is select your state, county, and crop. And what that will do will bring in a plug yield. And for this crop, Champaign County, Illinois soybeans, 39 bushels is the plug crop. You can enter your yields from 2008 through, two through 2012 in here. If you didn't plant soybeans in 2012, for example, you would leave that number blank. So any yield that isn't here is, is left blank, which comes to the yield updating decisions. If you have two years of yields for in 2008 through 2012, your updated yield will be based on those two year yields. So and if you have zero, no yields, you really don't have an option to update. Um, what we're going to, so 2012, Jonathan just entered a 30 bushel yield. That's below our plug yield of 39. Every county has a plug yield for each crop, and that 30 bushels was replaced by 39. Our updated yield in this example is 44.64 acre, four, four bushels. And our suggestion would be if that yield is higher than your current program yield, you use it. One thing about these yields is they're only used to calculate payments on price loss coverage, but we would still suggest that you update those because these things have a way of hanging around through multiple farm bills. So, and higher is always better than lower. Yeah, and certainly many of these payment yields uh, date back many, many years, some into the early 1990s, maybe even in the 1980s. So, it, if the Payment yield recalculation is higher, as Gary said. It makes a lot of sense to get your records updated, even if you are not going to elect the price loss coverage program or you don't know that you, whether you want to elect that program. These are independent decisions. Uh, with that, we'll jump over to Nick and the retain and reallocate base acres. Oh, we will also know we've got video links here as well um, for uh, for information on this so, part of it. So, so some of these these go those those videos go into much more detail. Also, at the bottom of the screen, you see email us and call us. If you have any questions about this stuff, um, email us and call us. And as we're going through this, um, we will be changing these websites to incorporate what what the what the questions are. 
Um, Real quick, we've got a question here. Is the decision to keep or update by FSA number or all of your farms by crop? All right, and we're assuming that this is the yield update. So right, just, to, just to keep these things separate, um, the, the yield update decision is by crop, by FSA farm. So, for example, you could update your corn yields on one FSA farm and not update your corn yields on another. Um, so it's by crop and by farm. And you know, yeah, a quick follow-up on that is asking about double crop bean yields. Um, you're going to have to be in a double cropping, an approved double cropping county um, in order to be able to, to use double cropping uh, in the payment yields. And I would, on something like that, if, if you aren't certain, I would check with FSA on the status for your county. A um, couple good questions, keep them coming. And as we go through this, Nick, let's talk about the retain or reallocate base acres. All right, so so this is uh, step three in our in our seven step process that we've laid out. Um, I guess just maybe a, a few other points to make on on steps two and three. These are decisions that that uh, I guess we view as being able to be made um, independently of of some of the other decisions. So um, in the keep up in the in the updating their yield decision step, you know that one is a fairly straightforward one. It's pretty easy to give guidance. Um, once we get into the reallocation of base acres, this is something that you'll probably want to think a little bit about uh, what program choice you're going to make. Um, but maybe the, the first point to emphasize is that you're going to have a choice between two base acre allocation options. You can either keep your uh, current base acres, which again will be listed for each of your FSA farms in that letter from FSA, um, or Based on the the data that you that you enter um, or the data that you that you have for your certified planted acres um, from 2009 to 2012, there will be a reallocated uh, base acre option. Again, it's just going to be that one or the other: your current base acres or the the reallocation of base acres. Um, the, your total number of base acres will not change on the farm, even if you choose to reallocate. Uh, just how many acres? Uh, uh, per program crop on that farm is is what would what would change. So that's why they uh, uh, use the word reallocate here rather than update. Um, again, uh, the information needs um, you need to uh, be able to compare your current uh, base acres, which are located in that FSA letter, uh, to the uh, to the uh, uh, reallocation, which is based on your acres planted to those program crops 2009 through 2012. Again, that information. Uh, would be in that in that letter from FSA. Um, Jonathan again is going to go to the uh, uh, real acre base acre reallocation tool um, in APAS, and we'll just show you real quickly how that uh, looks and how that works. Um, so for reallocation, this is another thing that we've we've split off of the uh, of the uh, main tools um, in APAS. So you can do yield updating on its own. You can do a base acre reallocation. Um, analysis on its own just to just to speed those things up. You don't have to go through and enter uh, as much information as the full tool. Uh, so here on this screen, um, uh, the first step is to just select um, any crops that either have current base on your farm um, and then in addition any crops that you planted um, over that 2009 through 2012 window. And what Jonathan uh, is doing here is uh, in the in the boxes on the far left here, he's entering the current base acre information for this farm. So this is a farm with 100 total base acres, uh, 70 in corn, 30 acres in soybeans, and then he's entering in the planted acres from 2009 to 2012. So as you can see here, if this farm was in a corn soybean rotation, corn in 2009, beans in 2010, and so on, the base acre reallocation. Uh, option would be to go from 70 base in corn, 30 base in beans, to 50 base in corn and 50 base in beans. So again, it's just the choice between those two, um, whether you want to keep your current or whether you want to keep, uh, whether you want to change to the uh, reallocated numbers there uh, to the right. Um, the, the example Jonathan did here, the, the current base was in corn and beans. The farm only planted corn and beans in 2009 to 2012. There could be situations where you have base in crops that you no longer plant. You should still include those here um, when you use the reallocation tool. And you, you may have planted crops in the last uh, five crop years that 
you did not have a historical base in, you'd want to include those as you set this uh, reallocation calculation up as well. Um, so, just just two other things about that decision. It, it, this will not change your total base acres on your farm. So, if you had a hundred base acres uh, currently on that farm, it's just going to change the reallocation of the crops. Why that is important is because both PLC and ARC County make payments on base acres. So under this, this scenario, if you kept your base acres as, at the existing levels, you on this farm would get payments on PLC or ARC County on 70 acres of corn, if that made payments, and 20 acres of soybeans and 10 acres of oats, if what we're showing on the screen. Under the reallocated base, corn would be paid on 50. So, if there was a $10 payment per acre on corn, base acre, the first allocation, which has 70 acres, would get $700. The second allocation would get $500. So, all of these, our county and PLC make payments on base acres. It doesn't matter what's planted from here in on out. So, this is why um, this is a, 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 a decision to take seriously. We got a couple questions here. We'll try to uh, answer on this one real quick. So on this uh, on this reallocation formula, the way it's set up is that it is the ratio of what you planted to the program crop as compared to the ratio of all program crops planted on the farm. So you could have overplanted base, but you still cannot add base, and that is a ratio that will apply to your base acres. So if if I'm reading this one question right, I think the the question is if you plant more than you have base. You can overplant base, but you're not going to increase uh, the base. And then, as far as the oats is in this example, um, yes, in this example, you could potentially, or in this decision, you could potentially zero out the base acres for one crop and essentially shift them or reallocate them to the other crops on the farm, which in in this example would would eliminate the oat base on the farm. But you're still at 100 base acres. You're not actually losing base acres. You're just shifting them around, uh, uh, looking at the what you've planted. And specifically, this is only the 2009 to 2012 crop years. So 2008 and prior to that, the plantings for those years are not included. Um, and that's in the statute. It is only 2009 to 2012 yeah, on the we, base acre reallocation. And we did get a question, why is it 2008 included? 2008 to 2012 is the payment yield update period. 2009 to 2012 is the base acre reallocation period. Just before you X this out, one other thing, it's it's program crops that matter. And let, let's say that this farm had, in 2009, 10, 11, zero acres in corn and soybeans because there was alfalfa on that entire farm, and then planted corn in 2012, all of the acres, and Jonathan's just going to run through a quick example here. Uh, so this farm had alfalfa, let's say, in 2009, 10, 11, and 12, and planted corn in 20, 2012. All right, and only planted 100 acres, but now its reallocated base will be 100 acres in corn. It's it's the proportion of program crops. It doesn't if you didn't plant it in the, like in this example, there was only one program crop planted. Uh, a couple other quick questions on this. Uh, ARC IC, the individual is also paid on base acres. The difference is it is paid on the total base acres of the entire farm. So it does not, ARC County and PLC pay on the base acres for the program crop. Yeah. ARC IC, the, the, this reallocation decision will not impact ARC IC payments. Total, is, ARC IC is paid on total base acres, but not on the allocation. Uh, that's a little. <laughs> little twist thrown in there. Yeah, and uh, just uh, one more question on this before we move on. Are you forever losing the allocation? Uh, I, I, in this case, would you just forever lose the oat base? I mean, I like the use of quotes for uh, forever because it is um, a farm bill program, so who knows how it could get rewritten and whether that could ever be picked up um, uh, from the past records. But our assumption or your presumption going into this ha should be that if I zero out base acres for a crop, then those base acres are gone. They are gone from the record, um, and they will not be. I would not anticipate or expect them to be brought back in in any way, shape, or form. So that is a part of the decision. Um, you know whether to keep or uh, those kind of acres or not is uh, is something we'll discuss a little bit further down the road. Um, but right now we'll get out of this uh, quick pop up.
uh, screen from the APAS tool and head back into the Farm Bill toolbox for the next step. But by the way, you, you, uh, go, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, the, the, the APAS tool, you'll see the web address up there as well, fsausapass.com. You can get through this through our website, FSA website, and then directly from um, through this web address. Yeah, that's a good one. As you see on almost every one of these steps will be a button to take you right into the APAS tool. Um, so now, Gary, let's talk about comparing Art County and price loss coverage program. Uh, step number four. So we're go so you cannot make these decisions at FSA right now. It's only the yield in acre allocation decision, and we're going to suggest that you put off this decision as long as you can, just because as we get prices and yields, more of those known, we'll, we'll be pretty accurate about what 2014 payments are. All right, there's three choices that you can make, ARC County, PLC, and ARC Individual Coverage. Um, we're going to suggest that you first look at PLC and ARC County because you can enroll on an FSA farm, corn in one and soybeans in the other, and wheat in another. So let's take the example corn, soybeans, and wheat. Uh, you could enroll corn and soybeans in ARC County and, and wheat in PLC. So what we're going to suggest you do is look at those first two, decide sort of where you want to be on each crop, and then compare that to ARC IC. The other reason is we think most farms will be in ARC County and PLC, and we'll talk about situations in which we could go to, to ARC IC. Um, go ahead. Yeah, you want to give just a little bit of background for those that may not have uh, been following this. <laughs> as uh, intently as we have. Yes. Uh, I can't imagine why, why, why you wouldn't want to follow this. Actually, if you watch our videos here on PLC and Art County, we will describe those here. PLC is a target price program, so it, it will make payments when market year average prices, which for corn and soybeans run from September to August, for wheat runs from uh, July to June, and it, market year average prices. So the target price or reference price for wheat or corn is 370. If the market year average price was below 370, it it would make a payment. There would be a payment rate times the program yields that you just 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 uh, just determine. Again, that watch the video on PLC. Arc county is a county revenue program so it will make payments when county revenue falls below a guarantee the guarantees are based on five-year moving averages of yields and prices they're Olympic average so you throw out the high and the low and take 0.86 percent of that when you're looking at these decisions um, 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 what you really are trying to do is gauge which one of these programs is going to make you the higher payments, our county or PLC. Right, and one of the one of the reasons why we think that in this step that you're comparing our county and PLC, not only are they crop by crop decisions, but both programs pay on 85 percent of the base acres for that crop. That is, ARC Individual, when we get to it, we'll, we'll clarify a little bit more, but ARC Individual is different. It pays on 65 percent of the total base acres for the farm. Our county and uh, PLC both pay on 85% of the base acres for that crop, which makes also a, a good way to compare them crop by crop. Um, and we'll now jump back into the APAS tool to do a quick uh, example. When, when you get into this tool, one, the button you see up here on the, on the top left-hand corner, uh, this is called Sample Farms. And, and as you see, it's sort of the five-minute review. This is the, the, the quick and sort of easy way to get a sense of what these programs look like and how they're going to operate. Um, you just click through. You pick your state. You pick your county. And what you have here, then, is a price uh, option. And CBO stands for the Congressional Budget Office, obviously USDA. FAPRI is the uh, University of Missouri's uh, Food and Agricultural Policy Research Institute. The acronyms matter less than the reality that what ends up happening with these three prices, CBO is forecasted five years of prices for all the crops, and these are market year average prices, as Gary uh, indicated. All these programs are using the market year average price, so it's a national price. It's the, the calculation of those prices received by farmers 
during the market year, um, and it's the same price used throughout all three programs. What ends up, the reason why we've got these three up here, CBO has forecasted uh, prices through 2018, particularly in the out years, but um, over most of the years in that forecast, they're the higher range of prices. So this, you think of CBO, you think of the higher range of prices. USDA's forecast over those five years is significantly lower, particularly in the out years, in years uh, 16, 17, and 18. And then FAPRI uh, is somewhere in the middle um, in the out years. And so they're, they're, they track each other almost completely in the first year or two, uh, and then they, they uh, diverge in the out years. The other thing we want to hit real quick is that um, what will automatically pop up when you enter your state and county is what is the vast majority of crop insurance purchase uh, in your county. So you can change this number, but through the model effort here, what this is telling you is that almost uh, the, the majority, the vast majority of uh, farmers in the county are purchasing 80% coverage. Uh, so it's going to compare that. Um, and we're going to go then and, and kind of walk through what we're seeing in the sample farm. So we're in Champaign County, Illinois. Um, here's your crop reporting district. And real quick, just to show the NAS information that's been pulled in here, uh, the amount of acreage uh, in that county to the crops, corn, soybeans, and a little bit of wheat, and not enough to not enough to register. And what we what is what is going on then? And, and Gary or Nick, maybe you can explain this a little bit better than I can. Um, but we've created, we've developed, or built a sample farm, a simulated farm, for example, for Champaign County. And that sample farm, you see, 482 corn, soybeans, 382, and five acres wheat are in proportion to acres that were planted in Champaign County from 2009 to 2012, and the acres are roughly equal to $500,000 of revenue. You can change those acres right here. So if you wanted to change those acres, you could change them. Um, and yeah, you could put 680, zero wheat. And if you hit chart now, um, we would we would show show those acres. Hit reset here. Again, what, what we've done is collected a sample farm. And now for that sample farm, we're going to give expected program payments for ARC County and PLC. Um, this is showing all crops for our sample farm, our expected payments, and we could go to corn, we could go to soybeans, and we could go to wheat. Go back to all county, though. Go. Just a quick note, as you scroll over every one of these bars, you'll notice it pop up what the program is that's making the payment, what that estimated payment um, would be over the one year. 2014 for the average payments over five years and notice that's when the supplemental coverage option kicks in and we'll cover that here in a little bit but, um, yeah. but these these are estimated payments these are estimated payments for this sample farm with that acreage in essence operating as if it were the base acres on the farm um, and then run through the programs and the model simulations to get you an estimated payment uh, for that acreage and again it's an expected one with we uh, we it's mod modeled through there. It's not. Uh, it's a simulation program. Go show the prices. We're show we we show the prices that we 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 are using here, both CBO, uh, USDA, FAPRI prices. And that's by the way, this is the only options that you have on sample farms. However, we're going to demonstrate this later on. You can change these prices and build your own and look at different prices, price uh, price expectations that that you may have that differ from ours. Um, one, one other, uh, uh, we are now showing the expected program payments per crop. We can go to the five-year option. And now, if you go to corn, if you look at corn under CBO prices, we're expecting 32 acres of, of payments for corn. And then if you can look at the one-year horizon, we can see what we're predicting for for 2014. Go, go back to the five-year horizon, Jonathan. All right. And so Part now, of this, right, is keeping in mind that this is a – when you make this decision, you, you're, these programs are going to run on the farm for all five years of that decision. So uh, that's why we've got a five-year horizon in there. Sorry, Gary. Yeah, no, I'm just saying right now you can see how those prices – 
impact the program payments for corn under FAP rate prices. Uh, our county is projected to make higher payments than PLC SCO. Soybeans, our county is projected to make higher payments than 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 than, than PLC. We hardly I, I have yet to see a scenario, realistic scenario where corn or soybeans our PLC makes higher payments. And wheat is is pretty even. And that's pretty much what we say across much of the Midwest. Arc County for corn, although if you get to lower prices, PLC can become become in. Soybeans, our county generally, and wheat, wheat, it's sort of a toss-up, but as you go to lower prices, um, um, PLC becomes larger. And Nick, is, would you say anything, or am I characterizing it reasonably well there? Yeah, and, and I hope I hope it's it's clear here. Um, I, I guess the reason for that is again the the different forecasts in those three price scenarios that we've that we've included in the tool. Again, USDA tends to have the uh, the lower prices over the the farm bill next farm bill period. Um, CBO forecast has has the higher prices, and then FAPRI is is somewhat in the middle. So, um, again, for for crop like corn, we're seeing our county. Um, you know, if, you, if you think prices are going to kind of tend to be on the higher end of, of some of these forecasts, uh, our county more than likely is going to trigger bigger payments. Um, and if you're, if you're on the lower end of those price forecasts, that's when PLC starts to look more attractive in terms of uh, expected program payments. And when you're looking at this, especially the expected program payment option and, and these average payments, they're average per year. So it's not over the five years, it's an average per year, uh, per year payment. So, um, it, so it's a five-year horizon average over the five years, and here you sort of get a this this is you know, on this screen expected sample program payments we give for 2014 and then all five years of the horizon. Right. So that uh, we'll get more into this in a little bit, but we'll jump back into the toolbox here. Yeah, there was a quick question though on the on the price options again in the sample farm piece of the tool, it's only the three um, kind of national uh, forecast scenarios that you can pick, USDA, FAPRI, and CBO. Um, uh, in the build your own farm option in this tool, which is is the box, green box in the middle there that Jonathan's uh, hovering over with the cursor, um, that's the one where you're going to enter your own farm individual information. It's going to take more time to do the analysis, um, but but that is a, a, a piece of the tool where you've allowed you to, to Customize a price uh, scenario, um, and you can change from those from those three national forecast scenarios. All right, so back into the toolbox now. Um, we've, we've walked through steps one through four, and then we get to step five, uh, and this is the individual agriculture risk coverage program option. Um, this is also a revenue option. Gary, you want to go through this a little bit? Yeah, so again, the, there is a video here also that, that will give you a, a more detailed walkthrough. Here's the big, big thing about ARC IC, and we could spend an hour describing it. It's a whole farm program. It's going to aggregate your crops on your FSA farm enrolled in ARC IC. And if you have more than one FSA farm enrolled in ARC IC, it's going to have aggregate the guarantee across those farms. So the all farms are enrolled in ARC IC in the state will be enrolled in one or one payment will be happening. The key, the key differences between ARC IC and ARC County is ARC County is a whole whole or ARC County one crop, ARC IC is all crops. ARC IC will use your farm yields in calculating the guarantees and revenue. So you will need to provide yields from the past five years for calculating ARC IC guarantees. So it's a it's a farm level. ARC IC is a farm level. ARC County is a county level. The final difference, well, the another big difference, is that. Arc IC will pay on 65% of base acres. Arc County will pay on 85%, as well as will PLC. 
um, that sort of a drag uh, on that where we see many farms in the Midwest in particular is probably staying with ARC County and PLC and maybe using ARC IC on one one farm that is variable. So if you have a farm that's located in River Bottom, for example, that has very good yields in most years, and a drowned out year in one, ARC IC may be your alternative, although that's even that's touch and go. Here's, you, you'll see, for our sample farms, we project ARC IC payments. Uh, on most of our sample farms, we come up with ARC IC having lower payment projections in ARC County. Again, because ARC County does it on a one crop basis, when you begin aggregating farms together, it's harder to hit the trigger. And there's 65% of base acre payments on ARC IC versus 85% on ARC County. And that's a big key difference in the two ARC programs. As Gary said, you're adding up the crops, all the program crops on that farm into the calculation, and you're doing it throughout the calculation. So when you're doing the Olympic averages, it, you're adding corn and soybeans, for example, in the one we're looking at, and you're weighting that as you calculate those and add those together. You're weighting it based on what you actually planted in the crop year. Um, it's a much more complex formula that we can certainly go into more detail if we need. But the way that calculation works then is it ends up setting a lower guarantee, and it, so it, it, it triggers different. Uh, it's got it's going to have a harder or a, a slightly different trigger uh, point than say the Art County program, and then of course the big one is the 65% of total base acres on the farm uh, that receive payment as compared to 85% of the base acres for that crop. Um, and as you see here on the screen, that that bears itself out in this sample farm in in Champaign County, um, using in this case the CBO prices. You can see quite a bit of difference between the payments. Um, one quick question that I, that I think we'll touch on because it actually goes to all programs is about CRP. Um, CRP, if the land, if the base acres are in the CRP program, they will not receive payment under these programs, but you don't lose the base acres because you're getting a CRP payment on those acres, uh, the rental payment for CRP. When they come out of CRP, then they will be put back into the base acres depending on if you reallocated, and they'll go into that program choice. So CRP basically just... Uh, suspends those base acres during the life of the CRP contract. Um, so we had that, and that, that applies across the, the programs uh, and the program crops. We also had a question, does one cost more than the other? And you'll, you will not be paying premiums for ARC IC, PLC, or ARC farm. So it's just an enrollment decision. There's really, if you want to look at it as in terms of premium cost, there there aren't any. And there, there's no uh, premium cost. I I would say that you could view it as a uh, a time cost in terms of the information you might need to supply uh, moving forward. Um, Gary, I don't know if you'd agree with that. ARC individual, the, the farm level coverage option, you will need to provide farm level, um, you know, yield uh, yield numbers moving forward because it is it is triggered on uh, a measure of farm level revenue. Price is still at the national level. That's something that's a price that comes from USDA, but the yield component of the individual crop revenues would have to come from individual farm records uh, that you'd need to supply um, compared with uh, our county revenue program which would be a county revenue yield that uh, or a county yield number that that would come from uh, USDA. And then on that premium note um, that'll take us I think is a good way to sort of jump into step number six. Nick you want to cover the supplemental coverage option uh, for crop insurance which is also a part of this but most importantly, supplemental coverage is not a Title I uh, support program. So you, it is crop insurance, it is crop insurance, it is crop insurance. So you'll be paying a premium uh, and quite a few other differences to these, these programs. So you want to walk us through uh, SCO a little bit here. Sure. So again, SCO is, is the supplemental coverage option. That's what the acronym stands for. SCO is, uh, again, I uh, need to emphasize this pretty strongly, SCO is a crop insurance product. So um, you can you can go and ask SCO questions at your FSA office, but it's it's not an FSA program, so don't necessarily expect to get um, an answer on that. You should work with your crop insurance agent uh, for information on SCO. However, there is a um, there is a, a, a interaction between SCO and the and the farm programs because what you choose uh, for your your 
farm program choice does impact whether you're eligible to purchase SCO. So SCO is only available um, to ensure uh, crops, planted acres for crops that are enrolled in the price loss coverage uh, program. So if you choose uh, Art County uh, for corn on one of your farms, uh, the corn acres you plant to that farm uh, in the next five years, you would not be eligible to purchase SCO coverage um, um, uh, for those acres. Um, SCO is a, uh, as the name says, it's a supplemental program. Um, a lot of times people refer to these as, as shallow loss programs. It's providing coverage for a portion of the deductible. Um, SCO can get uh, relatively complicated. Um, it First of all, it mimics the program, the underlying uh, plan of insurance that you buy. So again, you have to enroll in PLC. You also have to buy a revenue protection, revenue protection with the harvest price exclusion, or a yield protection policy for the crop. That's your underlying individual plan of insurance. The type of plan you purchase and the coverage level you select uh, kind of defines what type of coverage that SCO policy uh, provides you. So SCO is a county-based program. It'll trigger at 80% of the county guarantee and the coverage goes down to your individual coverage level. So if you buy 75% coverage, SCO covers from 86% of the county down to 75% of the county. If their county losses are greater than that, you get the max SEO payment, and the concept is that your individual plan covers the, the larger loss. Um, if you, if you uh, again, if you purchase revenue or revenue with the harvest price exclusion, SCO is a county revenue program. If you purchase yield protection, SCO is a county uh, yield program uh, for you as the individual farmer. A couple, couple other points. We've had a couple questions. Um, uh, SCO is paid on planted acres unlike the other other programs. So if you enroll in our, our, your corn in Arc County, it'll play on base acres. SCO will play on planted acres. Um, um, SCO is an, will be an enterprise unit sort of policy. It, it, it pays on, it, it will, it will trigger for all crops in the county, or it will not trigger. So, right. so, yeah. What will differ across uh, individual farmers is is the dollar amount of the payment. So, if you got two farmers in a county, both have SCO, um, the payment will be triggered, or it won't for both farmers. It's just the size of the payment that will differ. The size of that payment will depend on the the individual farmers' APH yields, so their their liability they're insuring. It'll it'll again de uh, be determined by the type and the and the level of coverage that they purchase for their individual plan of insurance. So different farmers will get different SEO payments, but they'll either all get them in a county or none of them will get them in a county. And that to me is probably a really big feature to think about when you think about SEO is you're purchasing a county trigger, but it's it it is all in your underlying farm information. So the county has to move. And so one of the examples always is what happens if I'm in a part of the county that that typically sees uh, low yields or, or has losses when the rest of the county does well, in that case then you've really got to consider how SEO is going to work because it takes the county to move before to trigger an SEO payment as, a, as compared to what your individual farm loss will do. And we will uh, certainly do more information on SEO yes. in, in some future uh, webinar discussions as we go. But here's a general guideline though. If you, if you have a combo product and it's available to you in the 85 percent coverage level, there really isn't a lot that SCO offers you because you could get it in RP85 versus an SCO product. So if you have an 85% coverage level, there's marginal risk benefits to SCO or adding SCO. So um, probably shade more towards the Art County PLC choice in 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 those those cases the, the those uh, those cases. So we've got a couple questions here on payment limits and AGI, and I think it makes a good note um, in this part of the decision that one aspect of the SEO program is that because it's crop insurance, there are no payment limits, there's no AGI, adjusted gross income, eligibility standard or requirement for these programs. In for the title SEO. For SEO. In Title I, however, there is a payment limit for across ARC, both versions of ARC, 
PLC and should any marketing loan gains, LDPs, or anything else be paid out. So all of those programs, the marketing loan and then the ARC PLC programs, there is a overall $125,000 payment cap. So any payments out of multiple programs get added together for the individual. It's attributed to the individual farmer. Um, it can be double with a spouse. You can have a, a second payment limit if you have a spouse. Um, and, and, but it's $125,000 across the programs for the farm. Those payment limits do not apply to SEO. That applies only to ARC, PLC, and the marketing assistance loans. Um, so I think a couple questions came up on that. Um, we've got a little. We've got about ten minutes to go in our uh, in our discussion here this morning, and obviously we're going to be doing this every week. So we will continue to to dive into this a little bit further, um, and maybe go topic by topic on some of this. Before for the last couple minutes here, um, what we want to probably do is get back uh, into the the A pass tool, and and Gary maybe we'll do a, a quick custom yeah. farm just to show how this works and what you might see. So so if you so we d we've done the. Sample farms, uh, and now we, what we would do, want to do is a custom farm, and we're going to do a simple custom farm here. Only one crop corn, and what what bring, brought this up was the question of can I change my price expectations? Um, we're going to just do one crop, but here's where you where you could enter all of your information on a specific farm. Um, but again, we're going to do one one crop. That crop is going to be corn on 100 base acres, and we're going to just set one payment limit. I we, also will note just one feature that we'll get through as we get later into this is the ability to uh, export this file, what you enter, um, and save it on your individual computer. The APAS tool does not save any of the information you enter in a centralized database. It's not going to hold, store, or do anything with your data, um, but you can save it on your own computer. And if you've done that in the past, you can load it. You could load it back into the system here instead of entering everything. But we're going to start new um, and, and and get to the and the payment entities is the number of social security numbers that you can you can pay on. Once you get 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 that, and if if uh, I can type this. if if uh, if uh, if uh, this should be corn. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. All right, so so what. We're now adding crops, and here, if you had corn, soybeans, and wheat, you would add those those crops together. But we're going to do corn here, and, I, and we're just doing a hundred base acres, and um, and um, entering some crop insurance information because this tool can also make some compare make comparisons be, between and in conjunction with the program payments and ARC uh, or the um, the program choices and crop insurance. Again, we're going to enter one farm here. If we had multiple acres here, we could make a reallocation choice or multiple crops. But again, we're just going to do corn, 100 acre base acres, 100 planted acres. And here we could enter the yields, and those yields would be used to uh, calculate, if we wanted to, an updated payment yield. And we could use that. Um, again, this would be the same payment information that you would use to to make uh, make uh, um, updating yield uh, calculations. You'll see here we asked for a 2013 yield. That's because ARC IC is based on the last five years. So if we want to accurately model ARC IC, we have to have 2013 yields as well. Right, but this decision on the updated payment yield is only 2008 to 12. Um, yep. that, so as you see it here, you've got an option to keep your current payment yield, or in this case, it's higher to update, so we update and move on to the next screen. And here, you could change your prices, and here, you don't like any of ours, ch change them. Um, so you could use a $3 price, $4 price, or whatever price, and if you to choose custom, you got to enter your own prices. Or so, if you think one year, somebody yeah. they're they're pretty good up until about right here, and you think it's going to be a little bit different, um, you can just plug in at your own year as you go through that. So it, it, it provides a range of options in this part of it to uh, either be your own forecaster or use some of the preset forecast. We'll go back here on CBO and finish off. Okay. And so we're on, we just want to make a comparison between Art County. And PLC, or here we'll put our 
ARC individual in here as well, PLC. Remember, ARC individual aggregates across all the farms, so um, we're, we're sort of uh, being a little bit, we only have one crop in here, so um, again, it would be one uh, aggregate across farms. And we allow crop insurance to be put in here, and that is important for safety net calculations. So we get all this entered, and we enter a yield here for APH. And that's your crop insurance uh, uh, records uh, on your APH for that farm. And basic and option enterprise unit. This is for uh, calculation of, uh, of uh, guarantees and, and premiums, I'm sorry. So we're ready to go. And just, just for a note, we won't do it on this computer uh, since we don't want to mess up Jim's computer here, but this is where you could export all the details and information you've entered to date, save it on your computer, and then upload it back in the beginning of this tool if you wanted to. So you only have to enter this once. As long as you're using the same computer, you can pull it back up and, and run it through the program and make changes and save it in a different... Uh, and again, we don't save any of that information on, our, on the website, so it's... It, it, you have to save it. Here's scenario one's Arc County, and again, given the prices that we've entered, Arc County one year sixty four thirty one. Uh, PLC or Arc individual is our second, and PLC is our third scenario. And again, we could change those scenarios, add crop insurance, etc. But here, uh, let and then we give a safety net comparison. If you're looking at the bottom of this uh, slide, you'll see forty-five, fifty-four, four, fifty-seven thousand dollars revenue. What we're showing is the prob probability of making making that 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 revenue. Yeah, this is a revenue target. Another way to look at the safety net for your farm, um, the expected program payments. So we got a couple minutes left. Um, Maybe we ought to hit a couple of these questions uh, and then and then wrap up for today, and then we will obviously start back up next Friday morning at the same time uh, for this webinar, 8 a.m. Central. Um, one of the questions that came up early that was part of the announcement yesterday is this issue over producer and landowner. And as we understand the the regulation, um, the the decision on the program. So updated base acre or updated payment yields, reallocated base acres. Those are landowner decisions. Uh, when it comes to the program decision, the statute says all producers on the farm, producers are defined as those who are sharing in the risk of producing that crop. In a cash rent situation, the landlord is technically not sharing in the risk, and that program decision for that farm can be made by the tenant uh, to choose ARC County, ARC Individual, or PLC. Um, the, and of course, then that, that does not change if the tenant changes, but I think the presumption being that if it makes sense um, for that farm, it's going to make sense for that farm regardless who the tenant is. And it depends on, or it's looking at the fact that it's for all producers on the farm to make the same decision and you have to be sharing in the risk of production on that farm to be in the definition of a producer. So what happens if you have a 50-50 share rent situation? They would have to agree then? In a share rent situation then, as that landlord is sharing in the, in the production risk of the farm, then they have to be involved in that program decision as well. Um, it is only in that cash rent situation where that landlord um, is not uh, technically sharing in the risk of that farm's production. So that's one thing that we're going to dive into a little bit uh, further as we uh, un unpack that regulation a little bit more. Um, uh, but I know there's been questions on that uh, all along, and so we want to get that a uh, little bit of a clarification out there, and we'll do more of that in uh, some future discussions here. Um, with that, I think Jim is uh, about to pull the plug on us as we're getting close to 9 o'clock. Um, we do have one quick, oh, the payment entities, sorry. The uh, payment entities are the number of entities you have on with FSA as who, how many entities or individuals that can receive a payment for that farm. So one example is if you have a general partnership with multiple general partners, then it is quite likely that has been set up to be multiple payment entities. For most people, we think you either just use one payment entity for yourself or two payment entities for you and your spouse, uh, and that will impact um, the way that, that arranged. But the, the modeling then is, is going to be done off of, of the information you enter in that custom farm. Uh, but keeping in mind that is a $125,000 cap across programs uh, for the individual. 
Um, well, one other question here was ARC PLC. Um, Planning doesn't don't matter to payments in 2014 through That's 2018. Right. So if you have a farm and it has 50 acres of corn and 50 acres of soybean base and you plant wheat on it, it doesn't matter. You're going to get paid on corn and soybean acre ba base, um, and 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 it. It, yeah. The base acres matter. That's yeah. a key, key point, and that's why we've been talking about reallocating those base acres and why we you hear the term base acres over and over and over again. ARC County, ARC Individual, and PLC are all using base acres. So what you are planting uh, in the crop years going forward does not determine uh, those payments. It's paid on the base acres. The one exception is that ARC individual will, in the calculations, use a weighting of those numbers across what you actually planted in the crop year uh, you're dealing with. And we'll, we can always, uh, there's more detail on the farm doc site, but we want to stress that, that these are uh, these base acre payments. And so we will um, we'll dive into those a little bit more. Uh, we remind everybody that these sessions are recorded and archived on the farm doc, uh, farm bill toolbox site. And I would expect a little bit of delay before we, I don't know, we have a question, how long will it be before they're up there? I, sometime <laughs> soon. It'll be soon. Uh, I don't know if it'll, if it'll be archived exactly today, but they will be available um, um, really relatively soon, and they'll stay up there um, if you want to review them or just review parts of them back uh, again at another time. Um, with that, I think we've, uh, we've probably exhausted your uh, patience and attention span for one day. Uh, one hour of farm program discussions is probably enough for a Friday morning. We do want to say thank you again for uh, taking time out of your day to to, um, to uh, discuss these programs with us. Uh, we will be back again 8 o'clock uh, next Friday morning, and we will go through the programs again, walk through the tools, uh, provide some more information, and kind of just continue to, uh, to evaluate this and, and provide analysis and information as we go. Uh, but for now, I think uh, we will we'll call it a day. Thank you, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.